ಅಮ್ಮ ನೀವು ಪಕ್ಕ ಲೈಟ್ ओके अंडी ओके सो आडियो अं वीडियो आर् क्लीयर अपर्ण गार स्वाति गार अंदर या सो यू नो अबउट द एम जी एनआरजी ए महात्मा गांधी नाशनल रूरल एंप्लायट ग्यारंटी ऐक्ट सो वे यू कम टू दट ऐक्ट एर्लियर इट वाज प्रोग्राम इन कॉर्स आफ टाइम इट वाज मेड एज एक्ट now it is the fundamental right of uh, a person in the rural areas whose age is between 18 to 60 and if he is uh, eager to involve in unskilled labor then he will be given the job card guaranteeing 100 days of work okay and uh, the wages will be uh, disbursed through the banks or post office accounts so it also involves the financial inclusion even we have discussed it it will also include the social inclusion how so 33% jobs are reserved for the women and even sc st or other depressed class are also given importance okay that is with regard to the mg nrga so that is only for the rural areas okay now so rajasthan government extended that sort of program or the same or uh, a program like mgn area ga to urban areas okay why see in urban areas also recent surveys have revealed that there is lot of unemployment okay yeah um, the rajasthan government will launch an ambitious scheme to provide 100 days of employment to needy families in urban areas on the lines of rural employment guarantee scheme mgnre ga more than 2.25 lakh families have already registered for the indira gandhi urban employment scheme which was proposed by chief minister ashok gehlot in the state budget this year you know the chief minister of rajasthan is ashok gehlot and they belong to the congress party 
Under this scheme, employment will be provided in segments of environment and water conservation, cleanliness and sanitation, stop, stopping defacement of property, service related works, and convergence work and heritage conservation, all types of works. So now actually, so the government will give the job cards and that people are involved in such kind of uh, activities like in the rural areas. So, I mean, social forestry or uh, um, drought proofing and the construction of uh, um, compound walls. Of course, they will help the maize and etc. So, these all are related to the urban uh, scene like cleanliness and sanitation and water conservation in uh, urban areas, like cleaning the existing tanks. Like take the example of, uh, you are having the Hussein Sagar in Hyderabad. Okay, or uh, digging the soaking pits. Okay, etc. And uh, stopping defacement of property. Like some, some person will come and uh, they will uh, apply a poster on the uh, I mean, government buildings. So, these people are involved in cleaning that posters, etc. Okay. Now, and uh, work and heritage conservation, like uh, um, I'm providing sanitation or, or cleanliness in and around the I mean, heritage areas like Charnar in Hyderabad, etc. Key highlights of this scheme people from age groups of 18 to 60 are eligible for the scheme. Payments will be made in bank accounts of beneficiary within 15 days. It is nothing but financial inclusion. And we have discussed in the last class how many people in India have opened the bank accounts under the scheme. And Pradhan Mantri Jandan Yojana. As per periodic labor force survey 1920, higher unemployment rate 7% in urban areas as compared to rural areas 4%. Now rural areas are growing faster than the urban areas. Economy, the, I mean, the value of the economy may be more in the urban areas. But now these areas are also having the amenities of urban areas. So many people are staying there only. One reason is you are having the MG and RG. Automatically, they will get the 100 days of employment opportunity. And a growing distress among the urban poor. See, the cost of living in the urban areas will be more compared to the rural areas. And if they are not having the I mean, employment opportunity, they may face distress or even they may commit suicides also. There are many instances of such activities. And prevalence of low wage. See, suppose if government takes these people, automatically there creates a shortage in the labor market of urban areas. Automatically, when there is shortage of labor, so what happened to the wages? They will increase or decrease? They will increase. They will increase. Yes, yes, yes. Now, uh, I'm prevalence of low wage, poor quality, informal work in Indian towns and cities. You know what is meant by informal work? No person is having the guarantee of their work tomorrow. All, uh, all, uh, I mean, labor are engaged as a casual labor who will not have any. I mean, security of term, okay? We have discussed in the normal classes what is meant by casualization of the labor. Now, rising urban population. Urban population is rising because of migrations, one reason. The main reason is migrations. Challenges associated with urban employment guarantee scheme. Lack of national level legal work guarantee scheme for urban areas like MGNREG. See here, MGNREGA is an act. Now it became a right of a, I mean, rural person who is in between 18 to 60 years to ask for the job card. But whereas this program is only program, not the act. So it is not a, I mean, gestable program. The government may give or may not give. Whereas this is the, having the legal binding. Now it, ha it has became a, fundamental right of a person in the rural areas to engage in the manual work, that is unskilled work. Yeah. Limited role of urban local bodies due to lack of financial and human capacity. 
see they are not having the finance and the second thing is human capacity why human capacity is needed because these people have to guide the unskilled labor so as there are no persons who who will get these hundreds of people so automatically they will not recruit and lack of social security due to dominance of informal i mean employment yes so informal employment will not have any security of tenure, tenure of uh, work or even uh, or even extension of social service schemes like esi see we have discussed employment state insurance we have discussed in the earlier classes so these people will not have now so you know what is meant by miyawaki method because even our telangana government also implemented that miyawaki method miyawaki method what is miyawaki method why it is in news so miyawaki miyawaki method is a japanese method for urban afforestation even the telangana government haritaharam will also follow on this method it is nothing but dense plantation dense plantation in our backyard or even on the road sides okay so, i mean such that what happened because of dense plantation sunrise will not fall on the ground automatically when there is no sunrise weeds will not grow so with the available uh, i mean uh, moisture or water may be the case only the uh, uh, i mean trees will uh, take that moisture earlier instead the weeds okay so that point you try to remember so whenever you are addressing the mains if you i um, remember um, this kind of methods it will be good fazilka district of punjab has become a trend setter in expanding forest cover by applying the miyawaki method miyawaki method is a technique of urban afforestation by creating micro forest over small plots of land even our backyard or front yard even top, on the top of our building it was devised by japanese botanist akira miyawaki in 1980s it ensured 10 times faster growth of plant and 30 times denser than usual 10 times faster means a normal forest require 200 years and this requires only 20 years in this technique native trees of region are divided into four layers shrub shrub tree tree and canopy after identification and analysis of soil quality yes we will okay so miyawaki method telangana government has introduced the japanese miyawaki method of afforestation to grow urban forests and expand the green cover as well as to meet the stipulated plantation target under the telangana ku harita haram it is a ambitious program of the government of telangana miyawaki is a technique pioneered by japanese botanist akira miyawaki that helps build dense native forests in a short time so first actually they will grow, uh, uh, i mean they will grow that seeds in the pods and germinate the seeds in a nursery when two to three leaves have sprouted move the seedlings to pods cultivate the seedlings in pods until their root group generally fill the containers and again and uh, they are shifted to soil first under nets such that they will get only required sun rays so cultivate under nets so designed to cut out 60% of sunlight per one or two months why they will cut the excess sunlight such that to retain the moisture in the soil okay and they will get seeds from tropical i mean forests and automatically in course of time they will adapt to the nature okay it has revolutionized the concept of urban afforestation by turning backyards into mini forests not only backyards front yards even the even the rooftops also this method includes planting trees only native species as close as possible in the same area which not only saves space but the planted saplings also support each other in growth and block sunlight reaching the ground thereby preventing the growth of weed if there is no sunlight how the weed will grow no question of weed that is grass unwanted uh, plants are called as weeds 
if weeds are there they will take the nutrients faster than the um, desired trees the saplings become maintenance free after the first 3 years the approach is supposed to ensure that plant growth is 10 times faster and the resulting plantation is 30 times denser than usual yes 30 times denser than usual miyawaki method helps to create a forest in just 20 to 30 years while through while through conventional method it takes anywhere between 200 to 300 years the same thing is mentioned here okay the quality of soil is analyzed and biomass which would help enhance the enhance the perforation capacity what is the meaning of perforation capacity whenever rainfall occurs that water should percolate into the subsurface if it drains away then in future it cannot supply the moisture to the desired trees water retention capacity and nutrients in it which soil is having more water retention capacity <laughs> Yes, black soil is having more water retention capacity because of a mineral called, what is the name of that mineral? Mont Morolinite. Mont Morolinite. We have discussed in our routine classes. Mont Morolinite is the main responsible for the expansive nature of the black cotton soil. Arthumita. Yes. Then yes, yes, yes. So whenever you are writing about the urban forestry, try to remember this Miyawaki method. Okay. Yes, this is over Fazilka now. Commerce and Industry Minister has launched Setu to connect startups in India to US based. So, right, to try to remember what is Setu. Setu is nothing but connecting the Indian startups with the, I mean, startups of the USA, United States. Investors and startup ecosystem leaders with mentorship and assistance in various areas, including funding, market access. See, what is the meaning of market access? If you are manufacturing any goods, so it should have the market. Setu is designed to break the geographical barriers between mentors based in US that are willing to invest in entrepreneurship and sunrise startups in India. The interaction between the stakeholders will be supported through the mentorship portal under the Startup India Initiative MARG, Mentorship Advisory Assistance Resilience and Growth Program, which is a single stop solution finder for startups in India. Very easy to remember. That is Setu. Okay. And even we are also having the Setu Samudram project. What is Setu Samudram project? What is Setu Samudram project? Nobody. Yeah, Bhagwati. It is dredging of the Rama Setu between India and Sri Lanka. Okay. So Danush Kodi Islands of India to Mannar Islands of Sri Lanka. In between, we are having the Rama Setu. It is a bridge constructed by Sri Rama according to our mythological stories. Okay. Okay. So, as it is having a height, so big ships cannot move. Big ships cannot move. So, now what is happening? If a ship wanted to come from Kerala to Tamil Nadu, all the way they are traversing throughout Sri Lanka. So, traversing around Sri Lanka. So, by increasing the cost of transportation. So, they want to dredge. But, of course, Supreme Court has stopped this project as Vishwa Hindu Parishad opposed the project saying that it is a bridge of 
a hindu heritage okay yeah now so next is the inauguration of kartavya path kartavya path and unveiling of the statue of netaji subhash chandra bose so now kartavya path it is not but, but kartavya road so king's way was uh, changed into kartavya path in delhi pm sri narendra modi inaugurated kartavya path and unveiled the statue of netaji subhash chandra bose at india gate india gate in delhi sri narendra modi inaugurated the kartavya path which represents a shift from the elsewhere rajpath king's way a symbol of power to kartavya path power to i mean responsibility kartavya means our responsibility an example of public ownership and empowerment kingship is it is like monarch like take the example of constitutional monarch so morning sir was discussing about the uk the kartavya path stretches from the national war memorial to the rashtrapati bhavan the kartavya path will exhibit beautiful landscapes new amenity blocks new green areas improved signages and vending queues vending queues means uh like your tea vending uh, i mean machines etc they are called as the kiosks the pm also unveiled the statue of netaji subhash chandra bose at india gate sri modi described him as a man who was beyond the challenges of position and resources because he is one of the main founder of the azad hind fauj indian national army the statue of netaji will serve as a great source of inspiration great source of inspiration for the people of the country the statue has replaced the mark of the statue of george v of england he was the first head of akhand bharat who fled andaman before 1957 and hoisted the tricolor you know even before that even even before this event he will uh, uh, establish a establish a provisional government of india at singapore okay even he will also hoist the tricolor flag and you know he will attack andaman and nicobar and he will uh, um, rename them as swaraj and shahidi okay which we have discussed even we have discussed in our routine classes even some islands name was also changed like havla islands etc okay netaji bhavan is a museum in calcutta dedicated to him the statue is installed installed at the same place where the hologram statue was unveiled on prakram divas 23rd january by the pm to mark the 125th birth anniversary of netaji so on 125th birth anniversary of netaji a statue was unveiled and we are celeb- we are observing that day as the prakram divas the statue is crafted by the team of sri arun yogi raj it is 28 feet tall carved out from a monolithic granite stone single rock its weight is 65 metric tons recently the government has decided to install a grand statue of netaji subhash chandra bose at india gate to commemorate his 125th birth anniversary and as part of the year long i mean celebration so now so they want to establish a big statue and even we have discussed even an uh, award was also initiated the subhash chandra bose aapta prabandhan puraskar it is the award given to the institutions or individuals who tried a lot to mitigate the disasters even this point we have discussed in the earlier classes the subhash chandra bose of the prabandhan puraskars for the year 2019 20 21 22 in the investiture ceremony will also be conferred subhash chandra bose of the prabandhan puraskar you have to remember an award so given to the persons and also institutions who work hard to mitigate the impact of disaster for institution 51 lakhs for individuals 5 lakhs the annual subhash chandra bose of the prabandhan puraskar has been instituted to recognize and honor the invaluable contribution and selfless service rendered by individuals and organizations in india in the field of disaster management the award is announced every year on 23rd january on the birth on the birth anniversary of uh, uh, netaji it carries a cash prize of rupees 51 lakh and a certificate in case of an institution and rupees 5 lakh and a certificate in case of an individual 51 lakh to an institution 
and 5 lakh to an individual or at least you remember the uh, sector in which it is given and you know subhash chandra bose was born on 23rd january 19, 1897 and we have discussed in our routine classes he cleared ics and he got attracted to indian national movement from non cooperation movement he will put an end to the ics uh, training and he will follow the path of mahatma gandhi he will also become the principal of national college okay and uh, his uh, his guru was chitranjan das okay and again we know he also presided the inc at haripura and tripura and at tripura he won against the super uh, even against the patavish uh, who was supported by gandhi and later he will leave inc and he will establish the forward block in course of time he will move to germany and germany to bangkok and finally with the help of captain mohan singh and uh, and Raj Bihari Bose, he will establish the Ajad Hind Force. Okay? Yes. And even when he, when in course of CDM, when he was in jail, he was elected as the mayor of Calcutta. And these 14 things which we have discussed, once again, I will try to recollect them. Education and early life. In 1919, he had cleared the Indian Civil Services examination. Bose, however, resigned later. He was highly influenced by Vivekananda's teachings and considered him as his spiritual guru. His political mentor was Chitranjan Das. He worked as the editor for Das newspaper forward. Even in two months back or three months back, we have discussed about the Netaji. Please try to watch that video also. Even it is having more information. Forward and later started his own newspaper Swaraj. So there are many newspapers with the titles for us. Association with Congress, he stood for unqualified Swaraj, independence and opposed the Motilal Nehru's report, which spoke for dominant status for India. Yeah, anger elements opposed the dominant status. They demanded the complete independence. What is Motilal Nehru's report? 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 Why it was uh, uh, made or drafted? For you, I think history is completed. Online students. Yeah, 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 yeah. Swati ji. Swati, correct. And also Bhagavati, correct. Okay. See, when you come to the... Okay, okay. Motilal Nehru's report. When you go to the background of this report, what is the importance of 1927 to India? Simon Commission was constituted. Okay. It is the first statutory commission in India. Why Simon Commission was constituted? Simon Commission was constituted to inquire about the working of Government of India Act of 1919 or Montagu Chelmsford reforms or uh, Montfort's reforms. Okay? Yes. Now, you know, actually it has to be one of the term in this act was after 10 years of implementation of this act, a statutory commission has to be constituted with regard to working of this act in India and, uh, and the necessary steps to be taken to see that the act will work in a fair manner. Accordingly, it was constituted in 1927. Actually, it has to be constituted in 1929. It was constituted two years earlier. It was constituted two years earlier because... There were elections due in the UK and there was every chance that Labour Party will come to the power. So that they, Because Labour Party is always uh, favourable to India. So the then Conservative Party thought that it would be better to constitute the commission in their period. So when Simon Commission came to India, we opposed that. Though 
though Simon Commission was constituted to study about the Indian conditions, there was no Indian in the committee. There was no Indian in the Simon Commission. So it is reason why wherever Simon went, we have greeted him with black flags and the slogan Simon go back. So in such scenario, the then Secretary of State, Lord Birkenhead, will throw a challenge, will throw a challenge saying that uh, Indians are not having the capacity to frame their own constant. And that challenge was taken by the all parties of India and they will convene a conference and that and in that conference they will assign the duty of drafting of the Indian constant to Motilal Nehru. And even he was the president and his son Jawaharlal Nehru was the secretary. And they will submit the draft uh, in December 1928. So while uh, they were drafting this, the first point was they were demanding the dominant status, which was not liked by the anger elements like Subhash Chandra Bose and Jawaharlal Nehru. They want complete independence. But they will give one year time for the ratification of the report. That is 1929 December. And what happens? The See, by that time, the British will not ratify. So, in protest, they will pass the Purna Swaraj resolution on December 31st, 1929. On that day itself, they will say that January 26, 1930 will be celebrated as the first Independence Day. That It is the reason why January 26th is having importance and even our constant came into force on January 26, 1950. And even India became Republic on that day only. And we are celebrating the Republic Day on that day. Okay? Yes. It is with regard to the Nehru's report and, uh, and aftermath event. He actually participated in Sal Satyagraha of 1930. What is Sal Satyagraha? It is nothing but civil disobedient movement. Okay? CDM. So actually... While passing Purnaswara's resolution in 1929 December at Lahore on the bank of River Ravi, where Jawaharlal Nehru hoisted the tricolor flag of India or Indian National Congress, he will also authorize Mahatma Gandhi to start a mass movement. Accordingly, Gandhi will start the mass movement. That is Sal Satyagraha. So, all the way he will walk from Sabarmati Ashram in Ahmedabad to Dandi on the Gujarat coast. On which day he will initiate the protest? What is the day on which he initiated the protest? Yes, Divya. March 12th, I think April 4th is wrong, Andy. March 12th is correct. March 12th, 1930. March 12th, 1930. And he will reach Dandi on April 6th. And he will break the salt laws. And you have to remember, if I am not wrong, March 23rd. Yes, incident at Jambusar, where the Motilal Nehru will gift their ancestral house to Congress Party. In course of time, after independence, Congress Party gave that to the Indian government. Now, there is a museum in that uh, Anand Bhavan. Yes, yes, Bhagavati. Yes, my dears. Yes. Now, he actively participated in the Sal Satyagraha of 1930 and vehemently opposed the suspension of CDM and signing of Gandhi Irwin Pact. Okay? So actually, what is Gandhi Irwin Pact? It is a pact between Mahatma Gandhi and the then Viceroy of India, Irwin. Irwin. So actually, what happens? To discuss the Simon Commission report, to discuss the Simon Commission report, round table conferences were held at London. They were convened at London. 
so for the first round table conference gandhi will not attend as already he was participating in the cdm then the prime minister of uk ramse macdonald request irwin to see that gandhi will attend the second round table conference accordingly gandhi will stop the cdm and he will sign the gandhi irwin pact so subhas chandra bose was not welcomed by this act of gandhi in the 1930s he was closely associated with left politics what is the meaning of left politics left politics means the politics which are attached to the or which are inclined to the ideology of uh, i mean communism communist ideology communist ideology so as far as india is concerned in 1920 mn roy will established communist party of india at tashkent why tashkent was new in news in recent days because one now one person in the us claimed that uh, they have killed the lal bahadur shastri if i am not wrong it was a news article okay yes 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 theek hai and now and finally in 1925 communist party of india in, was established at kanpur in 1925 by satya bhakta and singer revla chettiar which we have discussed in our routine classes bose won the congress bose won the congress presidential elections at haripura in 1938 and he also contested for tripura sorry in 1939 at tripura he won against the pattabhi sitaramayya pattabhi sitaramayya was supported by the gandhi later he will leave the congress party he won the presidential elections against gandhi's candidate pattabhi sitaramayya due to ideological differences with gandhi bose resigned and left congress rajendra prasad was appointed in this place it is it is very important point for for 1939 inc session babu rajendra prasad was the acting president as subhas chandra bose the permanent president resigned yes yes now he founded a new party the forward block the purpose was to consolidate the political left and major support base in his home state bengal indian national army okay you know what is the background of indian national army in that period british was defeated in the hands of japan and japan will imprison all the british soldiers in that most of them were indians under the command of captain mohan singh so with the help of that army with the help of japan our netaji will initiate the azad hind fauj he reached japanese controlled singapore from germany in july 1943 issued from there his famous call delhi chalo and announced the formation of azad hind government and the indian national army on 21st october 1943 the ina was first formed under mohan singh and japanese major yes we have not encountered this japanese major ivaichi fujiwara ivaichi fujiwara and comprised indian prisoners of war of the british indian army captured by japan in the malayan campaign and at singapore the ina included both the indian prisoners of war from singapore and indian civilians also in southeast asia yeah not only captive indian soldiers but also indian civilians who were who were residing in the southeast asia its strength grew to 50000 the ina fought fought allied forces in 1944 inside the borders of india in imphal and in burma and you know many people said that he died in a plane crash but it is not true and many committees were constituted to probe the death of netaji and one such prominent committee was was mukherji committee which revealed that he has not died in the plane crash okay my dears yes he is said to have died in 1945 when his plane crashed in taiwan however there are still many conspiracy theories regarding his death 
एंड स्वच्छ वायु दिवस नेक्स्ट टॉपिक इज स्वच्छ वायु दिवस दट इज नथिंग बट क्लीन एयर थर्ड इंटरनेशनल डे ऑफ क्लीन एयर फॉर ब्लू स्काइज स्वच्छ वायु दिवस डेली यू हैव वन आर अदर डे दट इज अ प्रॉब्लम फॉर द एस्पिरेंट्स स्वच्छ वायु दिवस स्वच्छ वायु नील गगन स्वच्छ वायु नील गगन वॉज ऑर्गेनाइज बाय द यूनियन मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ एनवायरमेंट फॉरेस्ट एंड क्लाइमेट चेंज to improve the quality of air under ncap national clean air program see we are uh, polluting the air by releasing chlorofluorocarbons and also particulate matter particulate matter which is uh, i mean coming from the stone crusher etc so all of them are causing harm to the many living uh, creatures including the human beings they are also resulting the global warming there is rise in temperature and we have discussed in many classes what is the adverse effect of the i mean global warming that is it will result in the climate change okay and even for the mains people we have studied the india's action plan so with regard to climate change eight uh, eight programs have been unveiled by indian government to to combat the climate change okay yes as designated 7 september unga united nations green assembly has designated 7 september as the international day of clean air for blue skies in 2019 the aim is to strengthen international cooperation in improving air quality and reducing air pollution this year the theme is the air we share yes you remember this theme also the air we share next ncap the national clean air program or ncap is a government program launched by the union ministry of environment forest and climate change in 2019 the objective of the program is to improve air quality by reducing particulate matter concentrates by 20 to 30% in 131 cities in the country micro action plans and city action plans have been formulated by 131 cities of the country the plans are developed to address various contributing sources to poor air quality like road dust thermal power plants see thermal power plants will release husk husk or ash into the environment but now we are tapping that husk or ash we are using the same in the manufacture of brick bricks which is called as fly ash bricks and even a certain amount of fly ash is also added to the cement certain amount will give the strength more amount will reduce the cement vehicles etc sri bupendra yadav union minister for environment forest and climate change released brochures on capacity building and public outreach under ncap with best practices in eight cities yes best practices which have combated or mitigated the adverse adverse impact of pollution varanasi nothing goes to waste see last two or three sessions we were i'm discussing about the solid waste management in the mains classes pyrolysis incineration biomass etc 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 so every city is having their own approach varanasi nothing goes to waste srinagar all hands on board means all are active to save our environment bengaluru clean road clean city now automatically there are lot of rainfall everything will become clean even big big banglas have been impounded in water it seems i had seen in the paper even the billionaires villas are in the ocean so see nature so nature is nature so nature is not having any sort of discrimination okay lucknow under control pune the right drive akola water goes hyderabad the green way the green way we have to remember as we are from hyderabad tutukodi treasure from trash trash yes from trash we can manufacture biogas we can recycle we have discussed everything in our routine classes various process of uh, solid waste management 
Now, Foundation Day of IEPFA, Investor Education and Protection Fund Authority. See, now everything has become digital and many people are not aware of the digital system. Suppose, say, a person has purchased the shares of Hindustan Unilever Limited or any other company. Say, long back, when, uh, when the DMAT system was not uh, uh, existing, now we are having the DMAT. What is DMAT? Stocks, shares, etc. In the, in the electronic form. Earlier it was not the case. We used to have the physical shares. Now everything has changed. Suppose a person forgot to get uh, the DMAT account. Then these people will help that person to regain his shares. And even the, the lost dividend every year or every quarter, the companies will declare the dividend to the shareholders. So as he is not having the DMAT account and the DMAT account is not linked to the bank, then he will not get the dividend. These people will help him to get uh, his dividend back. So it is investor friendly and to create the investor awareness in the modern financial system, especially modern, modern digital financing system, everything digital, online transfer, offline transfer, GPay, MPay, YPay, UPay, IPay. I hope you all are existing. Yes. Okay. A seminar was organized by IEPFA and NCAER, National Council of Applied Economic Research, on the sixth foundation day of IEPFA. The aim of the program was to create investor awareness and promote financial literacy among investors, maybe in the form of stocks, maybe in the form of debentures, maybe in the form of bonds, maybe in the form of deposits, maybe in the form of uh, the ETF, Exchange Traded Fund. The seminar concluded with a panel discussion on investor protection in a digital world, focusing on the need for safeguarding investors in an environment of increasing digitization of financial transactions. Just now I told you, everything through DMAT account. If you are having the phone, you can trade. That's all. The IEPFA was established on 7 September 2016 under the Ministry of Corporate Affairs, Government of India. The IEPFA is entrusted with the responsibility of administration of the Investor Education Protection Fund, making refund of shares, unclaimed dividends, mature deposits, debentures, etc. to investors, promoting awareness among investors and protecting the interests of investors. We have discussed in our routine classes what is the difference between the debenture and a share. We can go through the banking chapter in our application okay of course now ncair was established in 1956 ncair is india's oldest and largest independent non-profit economic policy research institute the Attorney general dr poonam gupta is the first woman to head this institute who took charge on 1st july 2021 now west so earlier in our mains classes, we have discussed about the STEM, S-T-E-M. What is the full form of STEM, Mr. Rahul? Science, Technology, Engineering, Mathematics. So we were discussing that in our routine mains classes when we were talking about the women empowerment. The surveys revealed that in that stream, Science, Technology, and Engineering, and Mathematics, the percentage of women are very less. And when you come to the iSTEM, okay, iSTEM is a platform where the researchers are made available, I mean resources. Suppose from a college, a person wants to do the research, say a pharma student, but he will not have the resource. Through this platform, Pharma companies like Ready Labs, Hetero, etc. will come forward to provide them platform to initiate and uh, continue their research. Research and innovation is needed. It is must to use the resources in a judicious manner and to invent uh, life-saving drugs, life-saving vaccines and to invent technology to minimize the pollution to invent technology to minimize the consumption of electricity. Innovation and technology is must. So what is the aim of ISTEM? The aim of ISTEM was to, to 
correlate the i mean the um, i mean research person with the i mean resource person and what is west west is giving importance for women in the i stem i stem sorry women in engineering science and technology a new i stem indian science technology and engineering facilities map initiative west was launched on 5th september by dr parvinder maini scientific secretary i stem it is a dynamic and interactive national web portal which hosts various scientific programs initiated by the office of the principal scientific advisor government of india the main objective of the portal is to provide support to needy researchers so companies will come forward suppose a person wanted to involve in the automobile research then the companies like ashok lil and mahindra will come forward research in different ways and strengthen the r&d ecosystem to fulfill the necessity of the people of the country it was launched by sri narendra modi on 3rd january 2020 through west ism will provide a separate platform for women researchers scientists and technologists to carry out research in basic or applied sciences in frontier means top areas of science and engineering the access to r&d facilities and r&d software program like autocad lab view cosmel matlab under istem will provide immense support to women entrepreneurs in science and technology okay istem istem is a national web portal for sharing r&d research and developmental facilities the portal facilities researchers facilitates researchers to access slots for the use of equipment like pharma labs etc because their college may not have that equipment is needed as well as to share the details of the outcomes such as patents publications and technologies patents are very important if there is no patent nobody will be encouraged to in invent a new item because the second day other person will copy that and he will lose the benefit of the market <laughs> launch it was launched in january 2020 it is an initiative of office of the principal scientific advisor to the government of india under the aegis of prime minister science technology and innovation advisory council pm stiac it is an over overarching council that facilitates the principal scientific advisor's office to assess the status assess the status in specific science and technology domains so try to remember this is the goal the goal of istem is to strengthen the r&d ecosystem of the country i told you why r&d is needed r&d is needed to have judicious use of resources and everything and even to control the pollution everything now what is pm sri yojana what is pm sri yojana many people might have idea about this so it is the yes 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 schools for rising india government schools not corporate schools now what is happening education is entering into the hands of corporate so only rich can have that access so government should initiate more and more such programs to see that a level playing field is created between the haves and have not at least in the initial education system sector okay pm sri yojana a new initiative pm sri yojana was launched by sri narendra modi on teachers day 5 september 2022 The day commemorates the birth anniversary of scholar and Bharat Ratna recipient Dr. S. Radha Krishna Sarve Pal Radha Krishna, born on on this day in 1888. He was the first vice president and second president of Independent India after Babu Rajendra Prasad. Under the PM Sri Yojana, a centrally sponsored scheme, 14,500 schools will be upgraded across the country. These schools will be selected from the schools run by the central government, state government, union territories, local bodies. 14500 schools will be transformed into model schools which which will show cause all the components of national education policy 2020 the teaching methods which is called as methods or pedagogy employed in these schools will be more holistic means the the student should understand everything not partial like you people studying partial there is a need for comprehensive study there is a need for holistic study so then only you will address the questions in the upsc tspsc appsc or either any state services and experiment based 
integrated playway in the formative years learner centered enjoyable and flexible not like mugging up the things like nowadays schools are running from morning 70 morning 7 to evening 7 the ultimate result is the child will face the backbone pain in course of time what he will become you people know then waste recycling water conservation energy efficiency and adopting an organic lifestyle will be part of the curriculum in these schools these schools will have advanced technology and smart classrooms like digital boards as we are having conceptual learning and usage of knowledge in real life set, life situations will be the focus of this yojana now you know india's first ever night sky sanctuary to be set up in ladakh in whole world there are nearly 15 such uh, i mean night sky or dark sky i mean sanctuaries the first dark sky reserve will be established in hanle ladakh try to remember it is the first in india it is a unique and first of its kind initiative the first, the country's first ever night sky sanctuary will be set up by the department of science and technology government of india it will be established in changtang wildlife sanctuary both are important on the same place ladakh with the next three months for establish the dark space reserve a tripartite memorandum of understanding was signed between iii indian institute of astrophysics ladakh autonomous self development council le and ut administration you know now i mean ladakh has been made as union territory it got separated from the jammu and kashmir it is observed that hanley is best suited location for the project because it is suited in the cold desert region of ladakh you know it is called as cold desert all the time covered with the ice away from any sort of human disturbance the region also has dry weather and clear sky conditions throughout the year the stakeholders should work in cooperation to ensure that the night sky is preserved from unwanted illumination and light pollution as it poses a serious threat to scientific observations as well as natural sky condition it will promote astro tourism so you can go there and you can watch the movement of stars in planetoriums they will play a reel or record like you go to the birla birla planetorium but here you can have the reality now changtang ladakh that is a national park it is a high altitude sanctuary of course sanctuary which is located in the changtang plateau in the lay district ladakh it is important because of the population of the tibetan wild ass or kiang and the rare black necked crane the wildlife sanctuary is spread over an area of 4000 square kilometer it has more than 4 lakh animals majority pashmina goats yak and sheep so pashmina goat is important for what pashmina goat pashmina goat is important for what my dear online students pashmina goat mohair shawls for which we are having the gi tag pashmina goat from its fur these mohair shawls are manufactured pashmina okay yes it is having gi tag yes 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 my dear next one so no ed enforcement directorate tightens news around the thomas isaac okay actually so masala bonds what is masala bonds masala bonds is a debt instrument by which we can raise the money from foreign countries in indian rupee indian rupee not in dollars it is having lot of benefit if we raise the money in indian rupee we will not face any problem when rupee appreciates or rupee devalues okay so it is the main aim of the i mean masala bonds it was introduced by rbi with prior permission from the international financial agencies so now why it is in news actually 
Kerala government, one of the corporation in the Kerala government has raised money via masala bonds. Why enforcement director, why, 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 why it is acting on them? Because it is beyond their FRBM limits. It is beyond their FRBM limits. So it is the reason why if such kind of things happens on one day, the state may become like Sri Lanka. The debt may not sustain if you cross the FRBM. Now take the example of India. Our debt is sustainable and in the recent years, in the long run, India's debt has reduced because there was the article yesterday in the newspaper that India's debt has reduced to some extent comparatively in, in, compares, in comparison to the size of the Indian economy, the percentage of debt has decreased. Our economy has, uh, I mean, expanded like anything. Okay? Yeah. Kerala government became the first state in India to tap masala bonds to raise the capital. So, masala bonds are the bonds sold in the foreign countries with the rupee denomination, not in dollars. The Kerala Infrastructure Investment Board became the first sub-sovereign entity. See, now actually what these state governments are doing, instead of state governments borrowing the money, they are creating the corporations and boards to raise the money. The aim of these corporations and boards is not to serve the people, only to tap the money. And you know, 30-40% of that money is getting into the pockets of politicians, as it is clear from a suicide in the Karnataka. The contractor has said that somebody was asking him, 40% of the share. So, 40% of public money is going into the hands of uh, uh, the other persons, maybe politicians or higher officials. The Kerala Infrastructure Investment Board became the first sub-sovereign entity in India to tap offshore rupee bond market. KIIFB had plans to mobilize 50,000 crore and through the above issue had raised 2150 crore. So, they want to, this, this corporation wanted to raise 50,000 crore. If such kind of 10 corporations raise means over 5 lakh crores, then how the debt will be sustainable? Yes. Enforcement Directorate has registered a case against KIFB for violating the FEMA. You know FEMA, Foreign Exchange Management. Earlier, we had the Regulating Act. Okay. In, uh, in the path of LPG policies, we have replaced uh, FERA by FEMA. As for the Kerala government, ED has no authority regarding the FEMA violation and it should be dealt by RBI. The contention is that the interest rates offered were higher and as a result the state has incurred a huge loss. They have to pay more and more. Like, uh, 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 like three, days, uh, um, three days before, Honorable Finance Minister of uh, India was saying that Telangana government has borrowed the money for the college loan project uh, with the interest of uh, more than 10%, 10.25%. It is a, a great interest rate as far as huge money is concerned. For a short term, say for one month or two months, it is not a matter. For a long term and even huge amount, it, uh, you see, it will impact a lot on the state's exchequer. CAG has been criticizing the government for off-budget borrowing. You know, Comptroller and Auditor General of India not only audit the um, reports of central government but also the state governments whether it is a council body or non council body it is a council body by article 148 now who is the present cag who is the present cag we have discussed in the earlier classes who is the present cag yes 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 girish murmu Yes, my dears. CAG has been criticizing the government for off-budget borrowing. Just now I told you, they are borrowing the budget away from the, uh, sorry, I mean they are borrowing the money away from the budget by establishing such kind of corporation. So in the budget, they are showing the fiscal deficit within the FRBM norms. But after budget, they are establishing such kind of corporation and they are borrowing the money. Borrowing made through KIFB, even the Telangana government is also doing the same. Not only Telangana government, many states. Now it has 
became a new normal. Made through KFB and has stated that as a result of such borrowing, the state could end up in a debt trap if the opposite borrowing done by the KIFB is considered. The overall debt of the state could be reaching 42.8% of GSTP as against the stipulated level of 29.67% of GSDP. So through FRBM. So it is crossing that. So debt will not be sustainable. Now, a, a brief discussion with regard to the masala bonds. What are masala bonds and their benefits? Masala bonds were introduced in India in 2014 by International Finance Corporation. The IFC issued the first masala bonds in India to fund infrastructure projects, roads, railways, etc. Because in that period, the in, I mean, just investment was very less and the nationalized banks were not in a position to lend the money to the infrastructure projects because they will have the large gestation period. So nowadays what is happening? Everything in the hands of private players. Now the private players are permitted to raise the money through masala bonds. Now take the example of Hyderabad to Bengal Road. It is led by the private companies. They will collect the toll, user charges. The IFC issued the first masala bonds in India to fund, fund infrastructure projects. Indian entities or companies issue masala bonds outside India to raise money. The issue of this bond is in Indian currency rather than local currency. Suppose if you go to the, I mean UK, their local currency is pound, but they are issued in the Indian currency. So the Indian person who raised the money will be away from the problems of index, I mean rupee volatility, appreciation, depreciation, etc. Thus if the rupee rate falls, the investor will bear the loss. Why? He has to pay more, more money. So now he is not having that problem. Why? He is borrowing the money itself in the Indian rupee. Masala bonds are rupee denominated bonds issued outside India by Indian entities. They are debt instruments which help to raise money in local currency from foreign investors. Both the government and private entities can issue these bonds. Investors outside India would like to invest in assets in India can subscribe to these bonds. Actually, many people are interested to invest in India. All will not have the access. Now, these this masala bonds are giving them an opportunity to invest in India and tap the benefit. Any resident of that country can subscribe to these bonds. Any person which are the members of Financial Action Task Force. So you can raise the money from the members, from the member countries who are the members of FATF, whether India is a member or not, FATF, whether India is a member or not for FATF. India is the member. What is the main duty of FATF, my dear consider? Yes, 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 yes. They will give Red list, grey list with regard to the country's terrorist activities and their support to the terrorist organization. Yes, even money laundering also. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, money laundering prevention and also prevention of terrorist activities. Yes, we have discussed in the earlier cases, earlier classes. Okay. The investors who, who subscribe should be whose securities market director is a member of the International Organization of Securities Commission. Yes. According to RBI, the maturity period is 3 years for the bonds raised to the rupee equivalent of 50 million and 5 years above that. Okay. Where can the proceeds from these bonds be used? Suppose I am an industrialist. If I take this money from the foreign countries, where I have to use this money? In refinancing of rupee loan and non-convertible debenture. So I can pay back the bank loan. Why? I will get these loans at a lesser rate of in interest and non-convertible debentures means what are convertible debentures and what are non-convertible debentures convertible debentures in course of time will become share so no burden on the i mean company but non-convertible debentures they have to pay back the money so first they will clear these loans 
non convertible debentures and refinancing of rupee loan for the for the for the development of integrated townships and affordable housing projects but not for real estate everything affordable 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 working capital to corporate you know they want i mean lot of working capital nowadays rbi mandates the proceeds raised from these bonds cannot be used yes in real estate activities not including the development of integrated townships and affordable housing projects other things which are only profit motive activities prohibited according to foreign debt investment guidelines investing in capital market and usage of proceeds for equity in the so this money cannot be used in to invest in the stock market purchase of land you cannot do on lending to other entities you cannot lend to other person so these points you have to remember that the proceeds of masala bonds cannot be used for these purposes so benefits of masala bonds masala bonds have various benefits both the investors and borrowers get benefit from subscribing and issuing of the bond it offers high interest rate and thus benefits the investor so comparatively high interest rate in the borrowing country when you compare the indian interest rate it will be less but when you compare the interest rate of borrowing country it will be more suppose in japan if a bank is giving a interest rate of 3% for their people these people will give 4% that 4% is far less than the interest rate uh, which are prevailing in the indian market so that point you have to remember it helps in building up foreign investors confidence in the indian economy it helps strengthening the foreign investments in the country as it facilitates foreign investors confidence over the capital gains arising from rupee denomination are exempted from tax suppose if they will get benefit capital if they will get benefit when rupee appreciates and that benefit is exempted from the tax and we have discussed what is rupee appreciation and what is rupee depreciation in earlier classes if the rupee appreciates at the time of maturity it benefits the investors the benefits for the borrowers are it benefits the borrower as there is no currency risk it saves the borrower from currency fluctuation borrowers need not worry about rupee depreciation as the issuance of these bonds in india is, is in the indian currency the borrower can mobilize a huge amount of funds yes in foreign there are people who are having lot of savings and, and compared to the india in india capital formation is very less because our uh, we are having lot of unemployment problem and even i mean our jobs are giving less uh, salaries not all job at least more job it helps the indian entity in issuing these bonds to diversify their portfolio it aids borrowers to cut down their cost as they are issued outside india below 7% in india, even below 6% also in india you cannot get that loan of course just now i told about the kaleshwaram project at 10% more than 10.25% also okay now it is with regard to the masala bonds and of course one topic we have missed in between it seems <coughs> just 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 a minute just a minute just a minute yeah so government open to giving non tax incentives on solar modules actually now actually what government of india is doing government of india has increased the custom duty and import duty on uh, solar i mean modules why to encourage the indigenous industries and many times i told you now the establishment of solar power plants have decreased sorry uh, the establishment of solar power plants investment has decreased because all the items involved in that have decreased especially silica so so try to remember this point so the actually they are charging 40% 25% on the imports whereas indian companies are giving the are given the benefits even they are also given the pli production linked incentives that point you, re, you have to remember not more than this is mentioned in this again rbi mulls fraud registry to help check banking fraud see 
time and again you can see the banking fraud somebody will call us and the, they will ask us to share something and something and finally the result will be our bank balance will be out of coverage area to have a complaint registry rbi mul fraud register to help check banking frauds that point you remember now next one is so actually supreme court has ordered the government of india to increase the i mean food security coverage that is to increase the i mean ration card number because long back we have given the ration card now the population has increased abnormally so supreme court has ordered the government of india to increase the number of um, ration card such that more and more people will come under the net of food i mean uh, food security act that is this okay that's all for this day thank you meet for this class next week